out here in the bee yard and we had that colony and you can tell they're not they're one of the ones that's not quite as active uh and i believe that's the one that had cells and i believe that could possibly be because our brood break now with having cells we found no eggs and some queen cells emergency queen cells so not sure what happened not sure if a treatment hurt them not sure if we hurt them when we pulled the super off to clear all them down to doubles not sure what happened but they had them so come on with me let's go take a look Well, hey folks, this is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike and I do bees. Welcome back to Southeast Louisiana. Hey, if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And remember, I don't do how-to videos, I do how I do videos down here. Just showing you a vlog, showing you what I do day to day in the bee yard. It could be anything. Today, it's a hive, a colony that had queen cells, emergency queen cells in it with no eggs. And uh, that was about two weeks ago. I'm probably going in a little bit early I probably should be going in mid mid October but it's October 9th uh, I did a video earlier this morning showing you that other colony and uh, addressed one viewer that told me I'm always uh, every video he looks at I got problem colonies well, that's because that's the ones I'm looking at my particular sh video shows you those things shows you what I'm going through it shows you my struggles shows you my good and my bad but uh, that's what that was about uh, wasn't really a rant he's a regular viewer I've seen him comment before but um, anyway that's what we're doing is going into problem colonies because this time of year with these bees flying and I can't see with a GoPro and just going crazy I don't go in them they're heavy they were queen right when we did get in them I do one ass assessment after honey uh, harvest usually each year um, and that's it I don't I don't mess with them during the summer I really don't I, I pull the singles and make sure they're heavy if they're light, I'll look at them. If I see problems just from the outside looking in, I'll look at them. It don't mean I can't be fooled and they look great on the outside, but something's going on. Um, sometimes they're crowded to the outside and just hanging out, and that's kind of a warning sign because you're like, wait, that was a weak colony. We saw this in a video. It was a weak colony. It was, it, that, it was one right on the end. And now all of a sudden it looks strong because there's bees on the outside, but they weren't coming and going the way they should have. Well, what happened was they had weakened up so much. Obviously, there was queen... Uh, integrity issue there and when they had weakened up they just kind of crawled to the entrance and were hanging out there because beetles and moths had taken over the rest beetles and moths are opportunists they don't kill colonies they take over weak ones and run them out and then they get robbed and then they get killed by the robbers or they abscond but it isn't the beetles and the wax moths that killed them I was asked by the bug farmer what I do for beetles because Oh man, poor bug farmer. If he ever came down here, he'd lose his mind in some of my hives that got beetle problems. I don't do much with them. I put oil traps in. I don't use diametaceous earth. It is not effective when the beetle count is high. It just isn't. Period. I proved it. In my colonies for my abrasion, doesn't work. Not effective. But I pull the lid and I see a bunch of beetles. I squish as many as I can, throw it to the side, and I inspect it. If I see a couple, I'll. I might see if I see a bunch on a frame first of all that colony's getting reduced I may go ahead and shake the bees and pull them and kill them but most of the time I just go ahead and when I see that and I know got four or five frames that aren't covered by bees and there's a lot of beetles I reduce them other than that I keep working the bees I put the oil traps in with oil why the diametaceous earth is not effective for me is because so many beetles look at them working in flowers so many beetles Uh, they get into that that trap and yeah some of them get in that stuff and that stuff cuts them up kills them they start dying they don't sink they lay on top of it meanwhile it's getting humid it's starting to cake up the dead ones are there it begins to cake up it becomes a bridge and what I had seen when I tried it what I what I videoed and video proofed of it was it was loaded with live beetles like that thick over the top of the dead ones that made a bridge so there's only one layer of dead ones where in oil They'll sink and the whole oil trap will fill up. Then you have to replace it. You can get, man, you get 500,000 beetles in a beetle trap with oil. You may get 100 in one with diametaceous earth. So what happened? They started boiling out of that trap. And I was like, phew, and that, that colony ended up uh, going down. The bees were putting them there. They weren't dying. Ow. You sorry, Joker. Uh, they weren't dying. Uh, so 
I don't use it. So that's what I do when he asks me what I do. I used to freak out a lot. Don't don't get me wrong to the bug farmer. I'm I'm not I'm not making fun. I was the same way. But I finally learned these in the sun seem to do a lot better than the ones in the shade. I'm not moving that stand because I like its location, but it's just something I deal with. And my those colonies weakened up and succumbed to the to the beetles. Um, but the weakening was the beekeeper's fault. It wasn't because the beetles killed them. So I had one colony that survived for I bet I've had I had that colony probably going on at least five years. It came with beetles from the cutout I did with it. It always had beetles. It always had a high amount of beetles. It was always would weaken down. I'd reduce it. It would strong back get strong get strong again in the spring. It always made me a box of honey. Made me a box this year. Weaken back down. You know, it, it was a cycle, and it always had beetles. And I always kept fresh traps in it. It finally weakened up and was and succumbed to them, but it was because I didn't get on them fast enough. And it was the one I tried an experimental swarm prevention measure on. And that was the beekeeper's fault. So they just strong colonies, less space. That's your that's your weapon for me. I'm not putting guardians on. I can't put them on all these. I don't think it's foolproof. Ah, that joker just stung me right in the right in the nose. Pheromone, I smell it right there. Anyway, uh yeah, he got me right there. But anyway, she got me. I, I'm not. I don't know. I I don't want to put that thing on my small entrance and reduce it down already. Nah. All right. Let me get busy. Uh, I'm standing right in a flight path, so I've been hit about three times, and I need to get out of here. All right, folks. Let's take a look in here. Just doing a hive or two today. Oh, there's a beetle. We don't want him around. A uh, little bit of inspecting here. Now these guys could be a little anxious, we'll call it, uh, being that they're trying to make a queen. Do with them how they need to. Let's see. All we're looking for is any sign of a queen. So what we don't want to do is wait too long. Really, I'm actually in here maybe a week early. But I was out here, and it's a beautiful day. And I got to get done because I want to go watch some college football. It's college football season. Oh, I just broke some more honey loose. See, and that's how most of all my boxes look on the top. I really don't want to leave that out. Let's do this. See what, I'm going to pull the next one. But anyway, what I was saying is I don't want to wait too long uh, if we need to remedy them. I won't requeen them. I'll combine them. It's so late to requeen if it's got a significant brood break. Yeah, there's a lot of burr comb. I'm going to be ripping honey. So let me get one out. It's... All right, here's our pollen frame. I'm going to leave that one out. I didn't want to leave that one with honey out. I know there's a flow going on, but you know they'll they'll still rob at this time of year because it's not like a gigantic heavy flow. Bees will still rob this time of year. All right, so they're very calm. They're covering this frame okay. I don't see any eggs. Maybe a week early. See, there's an old cup. All the cells are polished, though. And if y'all don't know what polishing is, those that aren't beekeepers, the cells are shiny and clean in the bottom. And I have found when bees are calm and there's polished cells and they're not backfilling them, that they have a queen. She's not quite ready. And she is uh, not far away from being... A laying queen might already be laying somewhere else. And that's what I'm seeing. Polished cells, good calm bees. And they're covering these frames beautifully. So, that's a good sign. If I don't see eggs, 
on this one or the next one or a queen we'll put it back together and leave it another week I don't see eggs but again polished clean cells great coverage on the cells just double checking to make sure I don't have a queen that I'm overlooking sometimes I'll get focused on is there eggs then in the spring that's what I do I just whip it out see if there's eggs and I move but I really want to see the way they're covering this one make sure there's no eggs they're fanning hard on it Boy, that joker got me right between the eyes that darn that bee it was only a quick one though she didn't get no venom in me I don't think They look good, they sound good, they're calm. I see pollen coming in on some of them. I really think we're in just a week early. They're kind of light, stores wise. But we'll address that when the flow's over. Because there's nectar in here a little bit, but polished cells. So you see, what, what I've noticed is when you see the ideal setup with honey and nectar, Okay, and then polished shells in the middle, they're setting up for a queen. So I have hope that she won't be long. Again, no eggs. I'm going to leave it at this because what I'm seeing is promising. That's my take anyway, guys. That's what I've seen in my experience. We're going to put them back together. They seem really, really calm. And they seem nice and quiet. They're fanning hard. And that's that's not a, a, a roar. That's the fanning that I'm hearing. So that's not bad. Can, there's definitely a difference between that and the roar you get. But uh, we're going to bring them palm. They're doing everything they're supposed to. So I'm happy with that. I think we're going to see a queen next time I'm in. We can keep them tearing up any honey. All right, I think we're looking good, guys. Um, we'll give another week. I'm a week early. Just such a beautiful day. I felt like coming out here with you guys. Uh, and I want to get everything done before the game starts today. I mean, everybody should be watching college football at a minimum to root against everybody's team that's fun to hate. Alabama. Sorry, Don and Bruce, but that's just a fact. Nobody will. It's just a fact, guys. People root against them just because they are who they are and they win so much. Come on. Don't take it too hard. It's all in fun, right? I got nothing to say. My team stinks. The Hurricanes are awful. The ACC is awful. Yeah. For all you non-football guys, I won't explain. All right, guys, I think that looks good. I'm going to move on. All right, guys, I'm going to head on in. And uh, grab me something cold to drink. Put this pollen in the freezer. That's what I do with raw pollen. This is the pollen I got for another video. And uh, I'll put that in the freezer. Freeze it until it's time to dry it. Keep it fresh. That'd be it. So yeah, I think that was a success. Uh, even though we don't have a lane queen yet, I think we will. Yeah, I've seen that where, you know, er, what I've noticed is when they're hopelessly queenless is when you seem to get that roar. Or when you maybe have a, a queen has first went away, it seems like. It seems like when their cells good healthy cells from that point on you don't seem to get that roar the bees seem to be just fine because everything is going uh, as scheduled and then what I've seen in the past too is okay there's no cells everything's opened you know it's been a week or two you know she should be right on the edge where she should be laying but you don't you don't see her you don't see eggs but you still have that situation you have 
a good calm colony. Now they were loud, but they were fanning loud. Um, you have a good calm because it's getting hot. It's getting into the 80s now, and they got a small entrance. They're fanning, but it's it's got polished cells, the right configuration. Everything's configured. You got honey, honey, then honey and pollen, and then honey over the top, coupled with no honey over top, polished cells in the middle. I didn't keep on going until I hit the pollen on the other side, no reason to, but they were quiet, they had polished cells, it was configured properly. Uh, it does make me think that they're only in the top. That could be an issue, but um, I, I don't sweat that in the winter time because once it gets cool, uh, the beetles will start, start, start to subside. They're not bad on this end anyway because it's not shady, and they'll maintain that bottom, and then what we'll do is reverse it in the winter. Uh, at the end of winter, boom, they'll fill it up, la la la. That's another time, another video. But what I'm saying, I guess, is when you've went a couple weeks and you open it up and they're still runny on the frames and they're loud, that's usually a bad sign. They're hopelessly queenless. That looked very promising. So I think that one's on the comeback. There'll be a huge brood break. So that with oxalic acid is going to mean, um, it's going to mean that thing is probably down as low as the mite count needs, you know, could be. Uh, with the brood break and oxalic acid, we should be sitting pretty on that one. So they'll be fine, provided she comes on back and she starts laying. So I'll give them another 10 days. I'm going to check them. I don't like to go on them often, and I don't go on them often this time of year at all. They're beautiful flying. They're, aren't they beautiful? This is the time where you go, man, it's great being a beekeeper. In July, when you're hauling honey supers and hives are swarming and colonies are swarming, rather, and you've got hives flip-flopping and weakening and all, that's when you want to quit. <laughs> <laughs> it's 100 degrees and it's hot and it's miserable and the bees are making you miserable and they're miserable and you're like is this honey worth it and i'm quitting everything and i'm going inside and this time of year you get in the shade and you can cool off it's, it's beautiful the bees are flying beekeeping is all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you don't mind of course don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to share this video with friends family anybody just enjoys watching bees it's Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon. May Lord God bless you. We'll see y'all later.